Amateur football in New South Wales has a problem. In the last two years, 12 players have died from arts-related incidents on the football field. On June 5, 2014, Forest Ranger player Matthew Richardson already played 19 minutes of football against Hertzville Zagreb, when the 43 years old put his hand to play a further game. His teammate Andy Pakaridis also joined him. <laughs> line, Matt, Matt collapsed, play continued up the other end and um, we knew something was we knew something was horribly wrong. Um, first thoughts was that he swallowed his tongue, that was what we thought, but then we we realised it was far more serious than that and without a defib, without the tools in place, uh, we found out later that at hospital he was declared dead. On June the 7th, 2014, only two days after Mart Richardson's sudden death, 40 years old John Anas also collapsed on the field and died. He too had suffered a cardiac arrest. He was my teammate and uh, it happened right in front of my eyes. It was four or five metres away. Uh, I just couldn't believe it. He's gone for a run down the, you know, down the sideline. Um, and then he stopped and all of a sudden he's just hit the ground and it was just an incredible experience. You know, ambulance coming on the park and uh, you know, people trying to revive him. It was just unbelievable. Andy Pascalides reports. Well, uh, I fancy myself as a, a bit of a goalkeeper, but now I'm starting to get cold feet because I'm going to try and save a few against the uh, world champion, Willie Hoffman. Let's see how I go. I'm not looking forward to this. Andy Pascalides is a soccer commentator for the Indian Super League on Star TV. He loves soccer. He spent almost 20 years as a commentator and journalist for both SBS and Fox Sports. He is a well-known figure in the sport community. After the death of his Forest Ranger teammates, Andy Pascalidis decided that he had enough. That's why he set up Earthbeats of Football. It's a foundation that aims to have defibrillator at every sporting venue in Australia. With a defib, your chance obviously of survival goes from with CPR 2.5 to 5%, with a defib, depending on, on your issues, up to uh, 70%. So it's incredible um, how, how, how much of a difference. Looking back to what happened with your teammate, how much of an impact do you think that would have had if there was a defibrillator? In? Well, that's the first thing that we asked on that day, because people, some people knew about defibrillators. Where is the defibrillator? and there wasn't a defibrillator. So if there was a defibrillator, it could have saved his life. I mean, we don't know, but like the stats say, 60% of cases would save people's lives. So if, if, if this bloke, if there was one available for him, he could have been alive today. Since Pascal Edith started as bit of football, the Contemporary and the Stage Road Association have rolled defibrillators at the ground. And history was made when the Zap stands was unveiled by record breaking soccer root goal scored Tim Kale. Unveiled the first 24 7 defibrillator at a sporting ground that's here for the whole community. I want to thank the New South Wales government. This is the first of the pilots. This is the one that we want to go out to every sporting ground in New South Wales and across the country. Firstly, the work that Andy's put behind this. It's unbelievable. I've known him my whole life. I've played at Packy Park. I've played a lot of local clubs around here. And, uh, you know, this has been a personal thing where, you know, we've lost those friends, friends of mine that built my Hercules together. It's a massive issue. The main issue with this is we don't want people to stop playing football. We actually want to encourage people to, to play football, but at the same time, raise awareness of uh, how amazing this machine is. In September 2015, the Victorian state governments announced they would be rolling out 1,000 defibrillators to sporting clubs. But his home state of New South Wales is not falling in this mood, and Andy Pascalides wants them to put their money where their mouth is. I've got to say, look, I've been to Parliament twice, New South Wales Parliament. I've met with Liberal people. There's a working party that we're looking at putting together. Um, they are trying to be proactive. I commend them for that. Um, but it's time that the politicians actually listened. It's time. Are they going to react when one of their own suffers?
At the Canterbury Earl Sound RSL, Andy Pascalidis is walking the floor. This is one of his Earth Bit of Football events, and this is where he is networking for support and change. At the events are representatives from various sports, like swimmer Susie Maroney, Australian netball Shani Layton, rugby league George Peponis and Steve Mortimer, former soccer Peter Cathalos, ex-Australian cricketer Stuart Clark, and former boomer Mark Dalton. So it's not just about soccer. He's also able to connect with the media and most importantly with the government. It's all about saving lives. This is our fourth event uh, in just four months, but a significant event today because of the, the broadness of the sport people that were here. It wasn't just purely football, but we embraced other sports. And I think obviously uh, the highlights having 13 ex-Australian representatives in their sport, the Kale family engagement was just beyond belief. Afternoon to everyone at the Heartbeat Foundation, Andy Pascalides. Um, my mum and dad are there, my son's going to sing today the national anthem. Um, sorry I can't be there, but just wanted to send my support uh, for such an amazing organisation. In joyful strains they let us sing, advance Australia fair. It's not just soccer, it's all sport that, you know, like people have lost like family and friends and um, you know, there have been, unfortunately, people in netball um, that have suffered as well. So, just super grateful that, you know, Andy's put Heartbeat and all of this together and, you know, yeah, just want to help out. If it only saves one life, then how can you put a price on that for somebody's dad or son or brother or mother or sister? It can happen uh, to anyone at any age on a sporting field. Of course, anywhere it can happen, but particularly when you're playing sport because your body's under stress. So. I think Andy's done a you know, great service, um, not just for football, but I'm sure eventually it will go uh, cross-code, and, and that's a great thing for everybody. Linda Burney, the first Indigenous woman to be elected to the Australian House of Representatives, was there reminding the audience of the human toll and the trauma of those left behind. Particular respects to uh, those families that are here that have had uh, this issue in a very real way. Um, I've just met Peter, who's been acknowledged um, one year. Um, I've also just met Rachel and Aileen, and I'm sure that there are others on the table um, telling me about your dad. It was a very, very humbling experience. So I think that we keep uh, these wonderful people in mind as you dig deep today, everyone. Nathan Mark is a living example of how a defibrillator can make the difference between life and death. Today is lucky enough to be living on the central coast with Tammy, his wife and partner for the last 70 years. But it could have been very different. It was an occasion just like today behind me. Nathan Mark was playing for his local team in Gosford against Umina. Only moments into the game he collapsed on the field. It was only through the quick thinking of his teammates and the opposition players that helped save his life. Um, then I noticed that the person that was laying on the ground had a knee brace on. Nathan wears a knee brace. And I've said to myself, oh my God, it's Nathan. Ran over. So I leant down and could hear him breathing. And it, it was the most horrible sound. Honestly, it sounded like he was snoring and he was really gasping for, um, for breaths. Brad looked at me and said, I want to start CPR. And um, I just looked at Nathan's face and just he was absent. So absent in his face and sort of done our other checks and I said, let's go. Um, so Brad started the compressions. And For Nathan, luck was on his side. The defibrillator were there. So I made sure everyone was clear, pressed the shock button and started CPR again. And we kept, kept that up till the ambulance showed. So. We ended up having to shock him five times before the ambulance got there, but it managed to, to keep him going till they arrived. So we've um, driven to Gosford and they've taken me straight in with May into this tiny little room. Um, so it was away from everyone else, it was a little family room and at the time there was a paramedic in there. And Brad was in tears. And, um, he's just reached out for me and hugged me and I thought the worst. 
that <laughs> he didn't make it. The ambulance drivers um, to, to Brad said that um, at best he's got 20% chance. So, I mean, the, the support there was amazing, the, um, all the way from emergency right through to ICU and the general ward when he eventually got into there. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, one of the doctors on one of the last days, this was when they had taken the tube out. And I remember the look on his face. He's um, a little bit older than Nathan, but also plays soccer in the area. And he just basically slumped against the wall with his arms crossed and just shook his head with a shock, look of absolute shock on his face. And he said, it could have been me. It could have been anyone of, of our teammates. For early 2017, Heartbeat of Football will be rolling out an education program, which he sees them hosting a medical tent at local sport ground. They will provide health fitness advice, blood pressure and health checks, and also including CPR training. Andy's Andy's vision is exceptional. I mean, it does take I mean, seeing someone pass away, especially a teammate, and seeing the effect it had on a lot of my teammates. It's a very, very good cause. If you're in politics, if you're in federation levels and making decisions, money should be allocated for something like that because this is a great cause, saving people's lives. That's what it's all about. So yeah, let's be honest. Um, you know. I can't stress enough to the politicians that we're spending millions in the medical, um, in that area, in that space. You know, well-being, healthy lifestyles and all that. We've got stats that show that heart disease, heart attacks is so high. So why aren't we doing something through sport, which is an obvious area that needs attention? When is it going to sink in? Is it going to take a politician to collapse playing sport before we start to react?